Welcome and hello. Today what I wanted to do is actually look over the data that I collected for crimes, both violent and nonviolent, and just sort of showcase a little bit about what I did. I know I wrote that in the descriptions, uh, but I wanted to actually share some information and how you might validate the info. So the first place that you would want to look is actually at the Crime Database Explorer. That's up here. There's an address. Um, I'll link it in the description. But in here, you've got a lot of various bits of information that you can find and you can actually use. It was actually Crime Data Explorer. This is the tab that I'd go into. When you do that, the, the main things here that I looked at were whether it was a national or state. You'll notice that there's no 2023 uh, data just yet. This data is usually collected by May, you know, in years past. And you can find all that information out right here on the Crime Data, data Explorer. Okay. Uh, when I was looking for the information, I actually went into not only the national to showcase, hey, what does it look like for all crimes, right? But you can actually kind of check by the crime. They'll track um, records throughout the various years um, to get from like 2012 to 2022 is what we're on right now. You can go back further, 1985, let's say, right? Here's a peak, comes down for robbery. If you look at all violent crimes, there you go. Again, homicide, right? It peaked during this era, but lots of crimes did. Uh, and then it's coming right back down. Um, we they already are seeing that trend in 2023, but because this was the most complete data, that's why I used 2022. And then you can just continue on to the nonviolent crimes, including all property damage. You can see it's coming down per capita. Um, so that's really how the Crime Data Explorer works. There's some confounding issues, right? So if we come in here to state, and I'll just pick any state. It doesn't really matter which one. We'll just say Alaska. Uh, you can say, okay, well, all property, right? You can track all property. Alaska's in blue in this case, but it's not always the case that that's how it goes. You could say homicide, right? How much it veers from the national average is all in there. Um, and when you're looking at this, you can see that agency information right here. 33 of 39, this is what I was talking about when I said, hey, they don't list every agency. And you can just drop in here to anybody and you can see how many agencies have reported. That information, although somewhat useful, since this is all voluntary, it's not terribly useful, um, but it does change from year to year. So we'll see more or less uh, agencies report data. This is what I was talking about making this kind of mandatory if we wanted to actually get anywhere. I don't know what power that would be required in the federal government or not, uh, but it would be nice for anyone looking at the data. Now let's actually take a look at the data. Since the data explorer only has like a code version for an appy and like literally manually doing it, I typed all this manually and then double checked it. So you can see for like Alabama, I'm already gathering some additional information beyond crime, like annual income for a various other project for this next grouping of data. I took the governor. Was it an R? Was it a D? Right. Democrat or Republican was the senators. How many of them? How many House? How many uh, Democrats? And then that's where we'd get our percentage breakdown by the state. Then we would take the crime. Right. So if 80 percent of these folks are Republican, we can kind of say, well, 80% of the weight of policies is impacting the crime. So that's how you get this number. Then Democrats, this number, and that totals in the middle there. Uh, and you just keep doing that with every single crime. At the bottom here, you can see these weighted percentages. Because like I mentioned in the descriptions of previous videos, Democrats actually have, or Republicans actually have a higher than 50% uh, representation when it comes to all of these various seats. Um, and that is for a whole bunch of different reasons, uh, but the fact of the matter is they're higher. So I didn't want to unfairly weight them because if they make up 
of representation that says, hey, wait a second, just because you represent more areas, you are uh, actually representing more crime, which is what oftentimes is put on Democrats because they, they actually lead over a bunch of different cities and cities are high population dense locations that they unfairly get put more crimes on because they're just doing it by number, not per capita, uh, not by square footage or anything like that. So I wanted to take the bias out of the graphs uh, that way, you know, one side wasn't unfairly being kind of pigeonholed in versus the other, which kind of balanced it out. And that's how I got the percentages that you saw in the graphs. The graphs were then just simple pivot charts uh, using the weighted information representing as a percentage. And then I kind of stopped there other than coloring them appropriately to what we think of as Republican and Democrats. So you can see violent crimes, nonviolent crimes. So what I'm going to next is I'm looking at the best states for various crimes. And by that, I mean the states with the least amount of crime in basically any particular category. So you have arson, the top 10, uh, burglary, larceny, motor vehicle theft, right? All the way down through the violent crimes and then just sort of ranking them that way. What I then did was took all of the states that show up, uh, even though these ones with ones will probably not get a lot of research done on them. Uh, and I said, hey, the thinking is, if a state appears in that best category for, for crime data, so they have the lowest amount of crime in a particular uh, data set, and they're in that top 10, and they show up in multiples, there may be something to learn from that state is it conditions in that state that are going on is it policies in that state is there something to do with health or bail systems or numbers of guns or quality of education or or just education in general and what level people achieve right uh, is there something about demographics or income uh, wealth disparities anything like that that we would typically hear as talking points by political people and then I'm going to see, is there any commonalities? Is there something that stands out beyond just, hey, there's a lot of Republican leadership or Democrat leadership? And you can see these top states um, already are showcasing uh, a trend that there's a high amount of Democrat representation, but they're also in you know, similar-ish areas of the country. Surprisingly, I didn't realize Massachusetts would show up on six of these lists in the top 10, but they did. Uh, and Florida's here. Uh, you start to get other groups with um, pure Republican representation with Wyoming, Idaho, Iowa, right? So trying to figure out what it is about these states that might lend itself to more or less crime and then seeing if we can make some comparison studies that way, because that would actually be you know, actionable, right? We can actually go forward if, say, I don't know, all of them gave out free ice cream on Tuesdays. If that was the case, and all we needed to do is give out free ice cream on Tuesdays in order to help lower crime, then we should do that, right? That's where this is going. And I'm, I'm already anticipating that, you know, because I've already done some studies on, on guns, for instance, that guns may make a, a crime more violent, but necessarily having more or fewer guns uh, doesn't necessarily lead to more or less crime innately, as we saw with a lot of those top 10 and uh, or the, the listings of the various states for Republicans versus Democrats. Uh, so what is it about? Um, is it number of guns? Is there some particular gun regulation that a lot of these states follow? If there is, uh, there may not be. And so that may be one of those things where we're like, oh, let's stop fighting about that because it doesn't uh, even seem to indicate or impact uh, these various numbers. So that's where I'm trying to go next. It's going to take a while. So I do need to come up with some uh, different content before then. But if you have questions on the data, if you have questions on uh, the methodology in any way, shape or form, put them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. All right. Bye-bye.